Sightlines. Ciudad de los Estadios. The City of Stadiums. Written and read by Simon Inglis. I don't recall the exact moment when I hatched this notion, but I do remember airing it for the first time. It was several years ago, in Andrea and Mario's studio flat, just off Las Ramblas in Barcelona. I said to Mario, Mario, next time you're back in Argentina, could you please, please buy for me the very best fold-out map you can find of Buenos Aires? Money, no object, I want the best. Aware of how little Mario cared for football, I also asked, if you can find anyone to help, can you also get them to mark on the map where all the football grounds are located? It is said that in the late 19th century, the locals in Buenos Aires, porteños as they are called, used to describe the Englishmen they saw kicking around footballs, los ingleses locos, the crazy Englishmen, supposedly because they played in short trousers, and in those days, porteños thought that for adults to show their knees in public was embarrassing. I seemed to meet a similar reaction when I talked about my plans to visit as many football grounds in Buenos Aires as possible within a week. Out of respect for my boyish enthusiasm, the locals didn't laugh, but you could tell they were asking themselves, why? I had concluded from my researches, you see, that there are more football grounds in Buenos Aires than in any other city in the world. And not just dozens of ordinary grounds, but a whole string of major stadiums, each reputedly holding 30, 40, 50,000 or more spectators, and all within a few square miles of each other. A comment in a Buenos Aires newspaper seemed to confirm as much. It said... We have more stadiums in this city than public libraries. Never has so much knowledge of football been possessed by so illiterate a people. So when two or three years later, Mario finally delivered the map in its stiff red folder marked Gran Buenos Aires with a separate little street index and a truly awful colour photo on the cover, I was transported. It was a large, wonderful map. Oh, gracias, Mario. Sufficiently detailed to gratify my basest hankerings as a cartophile. Now, there probably is no such word as cartophile, but there should be. For how can one love cities and yet not love maps? I buy city maps with more care than I do socks, and when their seams tear from use, feel a good deal sadder. For me, a fold-out city map is a portrait of desire, promising delight, frustration and disappointment in equal measure. I can stare at one for hours, absorbing its patterns and names, the paths of rivers and streets, the relationships between one area and another. Bound A to Z street maps are fine for daily use, but they show only snapshots, not the bigger picture whereas a fold-out map shows it all. Like a centrefold, it is a feast for the eye, a beckoning finger to he who stares. A good map challenges you to step out onto a foreign street and sense your direction without having to look up anxiously every minute, without appearing like a tourist, to nip onto a bus or train without asking for assistance, to be a man, not a mouse. If you were to ask... Do I love stadiums because of what they are or because of where they take me? My answer would be to unfurl a large city map, if not of Buenos Aires, then of Prague, perhaps, or Melbourne or Los Angeles, and simply say, look for yourself. The two cannot be separated. Unfurling Mario's gorgeous map, so large it extended from one side of a double bed to the other, so large it extended from one side of a double bed to the other. I saw that it covered not only the city of Buenos Aires, the capital federal as it is known, but also the numerous adjoining municipalities which together form Gran Buenos Aires, from Quilmes on one side of the bed to Tigre on the other, from the Rio de la Plata down by my knees up to the Aeropuerto International, curled up towards the pillows. 
ringed by the kiosk owner who had sold Mario this map, were familiar names such as Boca Juniors, River Plate, Racing, Independiente and Argentinos Juniors. After devouring the map closer and closer still, further rectangles of green and more club names than I'd ever dared to imagine leapt off the shiny colour-tinted paper like twinkling gems on a Persian rug. Mario and his man had delivered. So had Buenos Aires. It was then that I accepted my fate. One day I knew I would have to conquer this city of stadiums, this Ciudad de los Estadios. I owed it to myself, but more, I owed it to this map. The years went by. I travelled to hundreds of other stadiums in dozens of other cities, but none came near to the Buenos Aires of my fevered imagination. Not even Rio de Janeiro. Ha! I had managed to visit nearly all the stadiums of Rio in barely two days. But in Buenos Aires, I had already counted over twenty, and there were bound to be more. Eventually, when the time was right, Mario spoke to Andrea, Andrea rang Fernando, Fernando spoke to Carlita, and as invariably occurs when one enters a circle of Latinos, names of friends and friends of friends merge into one, and in time a solution was found. It was arranged. I would stay in Buenos Aires at the Palermo apartment of Enrique, a man, an unusual man, shall we say, with whom my wife and I, plus Andrea and Mario, had shared a French farmhouse holiday several years earlier. Enrique and I had not hit it off. His egotism had crushed mine. His talent in song, in music, in the kitchen had reduced me to the role of an embittered onlooker. But maybe this time would be different. His hospitality, I was assured, was legendary. Meanwhile, I had to find an interpreter, because my O-level Spanish could now be described as the equivalent of a TV company, that is, a gran nada, a large nothing. I would also need a driver and an expert on Buenos Aires. I took it as read that anyone who satisfied that last category would also be an expert on football. Preferably, one person able to satisfy all three requirements would emerge. Marcella, my friend in London, directed me to Pablo in Buenos Aires. He was keen, but would be filming in New York. Then Marcella's 21-year-old sister, Jimena, she was also up for it. But when we met in London, she seemed too slight and beautiful for such a demanding assignment. Another contact called Roy had some ideas. Eric at the Buenos Aires Herald said he would do all he could to help, but I was beginning to think I might have to conquer La Ciudad de los Estadios alone when, within a few days of leaving, a fax arrived. Pablo was proposing his brother, Mariano, or El Turco, as they called him at school, because his surname, Salomon, sounded vaguely Turkish. I liked what I read about Mariano, and not merely because I was desperate. And so, a few faxes later, our blind date was settled. In a Clerkenwell cafe on the day before my flight, I showed Marcella my hit list. By now it had grown to at least 16 stadiums, with a further 10 or so in reserve. I wanted to know, really wanted to know, the distances, the traffic, negotiating streets which stretched across a double bed. Was I crazy? And then there would be trouble with access, surely. Endless phone calls, accreditation. I had a letter from FIFA establishing my bona fides, but getting past the security guards, it would be hell, no? Marcella insisted otherwise. But she did recall a travel guide which listed ten do's and don'ts for visitors to Argentina. The tenth one advised, don't expect to work to your own timetables. Another book said of the capital, Everything feels designed to frustrate. It seems that good intentions don't exist. Someone else commented that in Buenos Aires even the fast food is slow. Before I left for the airport, my wife kissed my furrowed brow. Just go with the flow, she counselled. It doesn't matter if you don't get to them all. 
What did she mean? Not get to them all.